All right, mortgage rates. Here we're going to talk about mortgage rates because I think it's really important because mortgage rates are changing and they have a huge impact on the marketplace. Why do they have a huge impact on the marketplace? Because access to credit means access to paying more for houses. If you if that starts to shrink, that means you have less capital sloshing around out there that people can allocate to their purchase. So if if the if the interest rates start rising, which they are now, that means it costs a little bit more to buy the home. I mean, this is rudimentary stuff. But what makes the interest rates move? Um, there's two factors to consider. Uh, I just want to do a little 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 um, dive into this because honestly, like not long ago, I didn't know how this stuff worked. And I was in the real estate industry for years and I really didn't understand how a fixed rate or a variable rate work. I knew the variable rate was based on, on the Bank of Canada uh, prime rate. And so the Bank of Canada, the central bank sets the prime rate. That's the rate at which they loan money to commercial banks. So the Bank of Canada sits on all this all this cash they have, right? They have all this cash and they, you know, they make it up basically. They just print it and with the digital, with the digits, they just punch numbers into a computer and they make it up. And then they, they, they loan that money to the commercial banks, like, you know, all the commercial banks, like Royal Bank, TD Bank, all the banks that are out there that are loaning out money. And, and the, the way that that money enters the system, the economic, the, uh, what do we call it? The, uh, the, you know, our economy uh, is <clears throat> they loan that money out typically through mortgages and, and, and secured lines of credit and home equity lines of credits and these kind of things. Okay. So the, the, the bank of Canada rate um, is, is the rate at which they loan to the banks. And then the banks will put a, a, a uh, either a premium on it or a discount on it, depending on how things are going. If the, if the, if the bank of Canada rate is really high, um, like, you know, say it's four or 5%, like it has been in the past, like a long time ago, then they might put a discount on it, right? When it's really, really low, they, they'll, they'll put a little premium on it. And the bank makes, um, I think that's how it works on the, on, the, on when it's high, but I know that's how it works when it's low. The bank makes the spread between those two, right? So they loan out the money um, and, and they pay, and then they'll pay the bank back, right? So they loan out the money, make a little bit of spread on it. So that's the variable rate. That, that, that's pretty pretty straightforward to understand the fixed rate is a little different um i've got a couple slides on this why don't i just get to them i, I got slides guys Woo. uh the thing that moves the fixed rate is a little more in, more it's a little different it's it's this thing called the five-year bond right um and and what is a five-year bond uh what are bonds bonds are basically um the government, it's basically debt that the government has. And, and they, they, they create these bonds uh, and they, they, they put them out on the marketplace and they say, who wants to, who wants to five-year bond? Who wants a three-year bond? Who wants a 10-year bond? They have different, different durations. And people will, um, will buy these things and, and they'll get a guaranteed rate of return, right? Uh, based on that current yield right so uh what the yield is is the yield is the return that you get on owning these things so if you bought a five-year bond now uh your yield is 2.8 percent 2.8 percent sound like a pretty good yield for five years what do you think no nope no all not a good yield like i mean look if with inflation running at 8%, 6%, 10%, whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it, like, you know, the, 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 that you're, you're negative. These are negative real rates. We've been in negative real rate territory for a long time. And so, you know, the, so without getting too deep into that, let the fixed rate moves with the five-year bond. So here's a little history of the five-year bond. Currently we're at 2.848. And if you go back, if you see, just you go back in time there a little bit to March 2020, you know, the yield started, yield went down real low um, when, you know, in, in when, so the yield goes down, what makes the yield change? This is, this is kind of neat. I didn't know this actually. Uh, and so let me get to what, how the yields change. Okay. Let's go with the five-year bond yield. The five-year government bond 
yield represents the return an investor gets by holding a five-year Canadian debt to maturity, okay? And because government bonds have the full faith and backing of the Canadian government, the five-year Canadian bond is considered the safest Canadian investment. I did not write this. This is from Rates by. Uh, it's considered the safest investment with a five-year term, uh, risk-free, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to read all that. That's, I think that's nonsense. But anyway, people still do these things, bonds. So why does a five-year yield matter? Fixed-rate mortgages are based indirectly on the government bond yields. Um, how is the five-year yield set? I'm just skimming through here. Um, the, the government Canada, the government of Canada issues bonds with a set coupon. The market then dictates what those bonds are worth, thereby setting the yield in the open market. And how does the five year uh, affect fixed mortgage rates? So the discounted five year rates. Are, oh no, that's not what I want to say. There was something in there that was really interesting. I just skimmed over it. Um, the market dictates what those bonds are worth, thereby setting the yield in the open market trading. Um, Oh, here it is. So in the middle there. So fixed mortgage rates are based indirectly on government Canada bond yields. That's why most popular mortgage term in Canada is the five-year fixed rate. Uh, it can deviate for short periods. The spread between the five-year yields and the five-year fixed rate always comes back. Nah, that's not this part. I'm looking for this one part. I think I might have not put it in there in my slides here. Basically, what it said was that when the demand for these bonds goes up, meaning that people are like, oh, I'm going to buy them. The yield goes down. The yield goes down. And when demand for these things goes down, the yield goes up. So when people are like, I don't think I really want any of this government debt um, because it doesn't look like a very good return or I don't really feel like sovereign debt is a great place to put my money, the yields go up because people expect a higher return if there's a higher risk associated with it, right? When people think that bonds are in a good place, the bank's going to be sol uh, solvent, the returns on those are lower. And that because they, they expect a lower, there, there's an anticipation of a lower return because there's some perceived less risk. Bottom line is when the yields are up, it means that people are feeling less secure about bonds. Like they're like, it's not as quite as comfortable. I think that that's, that's kind of how it works. Um, so if you look at the chart of the fixed rate, the, the bond yields have been going up real fast lately. And that means buyer demand for these things has been going down. It's a kind of works. The value of these things go down, the yield goes up. It's, it's sort of this inverse relationship. And if you go back in history, you look at these periods of time, like when the bond yields were really low, um, you see real estate, uh, so it's fixed rates will be low. That's my point. That's what I'm trying to say here. So when the bond yields are low, the fixed rates will be low, meaning credit will be cheap. So, you know, if you look at the troughs in this graph here, you've got the January 2015 to January 2017, you had low fixed rates. What happened at that time? Do we remember? Real estate prices went cranking. We had uh, fixed rates low. January, um, sorry, March 20. So this is like really like, you know, around COVID beginning, March 2020, you know, the yields came cranking down. Um, I'm not sure why they went cranking down at that time, because it would have been kind of my, maybe the people just started believing like the government's going to save us. So let's, they're going to print the money. So that's why the yields came down. I'm not sure why, but they were down, fixed rates were low. Um, so, um, yeah, I've got some slides. So hopefully that makes sense a little bit. Um, it's kind of a lot to take in, but I mean, I don't know. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward, right? The bond yields of these things it sets the fixed rates. When the fixed rates are down, uh, that means there's more cheap credit available and you see price increases. I did a little analysis on pricing and mortgages. It's kind of interesting. Come back to that in a second. Any questions on that? No, pretty clear. Yep. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, moving on, the variable rates have done this in the past. So this is the Bank of Canada rate and the variable rates are based on, on, on the Bank of Canada rate. So here we saw at the same period of time, 2015 to 2017, we saw the Bank of Canada rates were really, really low. We saw a big run up in prices that time too. And 20, here's the, the COVID uh, at the end of this graph, we see low 
variable rates there. Same situation, both rates would come down. They don't always work in tandem, but they sort of follow each other, the fixed and the variable. You know, the fixed will tend to be more expensive over the long run. Um, the variable has always done better. And, and I'm still a big believer in the variable in this marketplace because I believe that um, rates are going to come down at some point. That's my kind of base case for the long next two, three years, next two years. I think that some kind of credit crisis is going to occur. They're going to have some sort of financial recession. U.S. is already in recession. Uh, sorry, they're not in recession yet. I almost said that. The first quarter of the, this year, they were in recession. Uh, so posted negative gains for the first quarter, the U.S. Second quarter, we'll see. Uh, if they do two consecutive quarters, that's an official recession. And when that happens, it's buyer sentiment can shift. It can have a big impact on, on a whole sorts of things. Um, oh, here was that thing. I think I covered it. The number one factor influence the demand for five-year bonds is inflation. High inflation drives down the value of the bonds and drives up their yield and vice versa. High inflation usually accompanies overheating economy. And uh, yeah, I already talked about this one. The band, demand for bonds falls, the bond prices fall but the yields go up. Anyway, I covered that. So that's your basic mortgage update there on the background of how fixed rates and variable rates work.